Yeah. Let's go. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be continuing the heads and cam install on my little 4.8. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to let you guys know that I have squirrel tuned hoodies up for pre-order on my website. I'll uh, go ahead and leave that link below if you want to go grab one. Uh, they're the exact same design as the shirt uh, as you can see here. But anyways, uh, let's get started. All right guys, I just got done editing this video. I wanted to hop in here and let you guys know that I've decided to give away a 660 spring kit from BTR. All you have to do to get entered to win is uh, buy a t-shirt or hoodie uh, within the next month. So I'm gonna end that on November 30th. That's gonna be the last day to order. I also wanted to let you guys know that I got approved as a BTR dealer as well. So if you need anything from them, uh, let me know and I may be able to help you out with that. guys so as you've seen I got the other cylinder head taken off and this is the other new Wilkes performance head uh, once again big shout out to them for uh, hooking me up with these I'm super excited to put them to the test um, but anyways for the spring compressor I'm using this I believe it's a uh, bluegrass something like that um, I got it off of BTR that's like 50 or 60 bucks um, I had one of the cheap eBay ones that just does one at a time and it ended up bending and just not working that well So this one's uh, worked pretty good for me um, You just thread it into the Rocker arm uh, the stand bolt holes and then um, I will just impact them in there a little bit I'm Not actually tightening them down really just running them down and uh, these valve springs that came on the Wilkes performance heads um, I'm not sure exactly what they are but I know they're not quite as uh, strong as the BTR uh, 685 springs that I have this is actually the ultimate RPM spring kit that I have on this other head which I'm going to move over here so I'm removing these springs first I'll show you kind of a side-by-side -side comparison um, these do have titanium retainers though, which is nice, but so do these. So obviously not running it down with the impact or just getting it down closer so I don't have to sit there and spin forever. Make sure that's somewhat lined up. I believe it's uh, pushing the valves down, which I'm sure there's a much better way of doing this, but uh, what I found on the last head that worked all right for me, yeah, as you can see it is pushing them down a little bit. Um, give them a little tap with a rubber pallet. And of course the valve locks shot off right there, but oh well. I have seen people use um, like a big C clamp to hold the valve whenever it's off the engine like this, but uh, I don't have anything like that right now. So works all right for me though, doing it this way. I don't know if that's fairly loose. I'm just gonna go the rest of the way. The impact. Get these pulled off. Now I would go ahead and throw the other valve springs on on this other one, um, but I need to check the install height, which I have this uh, BTR spring height mic that I will be using to check that. I need to make sure it's as close to uh, 1700 as possible. Um, the other cylinder head I already did, and the intake side was one and 675 thousandths, which is uh, gonna put the 
um, springs too close to coil bind at max lift, which is uh, not that crazy, but it's like 630 or something like that. So um, I need to, what I had to do on the last head, which I imagine this one will be set up the same, is I had to pull the um, valve seal off and pull the shim off of the intake side and uh, put it back. It was just a 25,000 shim, so it put it right where I needed it. So I'll probably have to do that with this one as well, but we'll uh, pull this tool off and check real quick and make sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this retainer off and I will put it on top of this height mic and then I'm going to start with the exhaust valve. I'll grab these locks. It's important to use the same locks and the retainer that you're going to actually use in order to get the right height. I'm just going to pull this up and see if I can get in there. There we go. And let's see where it uh, where it ended up. So on this one, it looks like it is a. Uh, about one and uh, 675 thousandths. So I'm going to have to pull that one off, of course, and uh, pull the shim out of it. I'm sure um, it probably has a 25 thousandths shim, just like the other head did. Although the other head, it was one and 675 thousandths on the intake side instead of the exhaust so that's interesting let's see what the intake side is unless maybe I just mixed them up the other head was probably the same and loosen this up nope this one is one and six hundred seventy thousandths on the intake side so we're going to have to pull the shim out of this one as well so these intake seals or I mean these valve seals are uh, on there pretty good from or at least they were on the other head so it's probably gonna take me a while to do that I probably won't film that but I'll uh, go ahead and get that done and then I'll swap these springs over out um, in order to make it a little bit easier to get the valve seals out. I figured I'll go ahead and show the comparison 
versus a stock valve. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus on here. There you go. That's a little bit of a size comparison for you. And we'll compare the exhaust as well. Just ever so slightly. Bigger on the exhaust. Um, barely even noticeable. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Just slightly bigger. Definitely uh, much cleaner though. <laughs> Alright guys, just wanted to show you what it actually looks like when you're measuring this. So, um... Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. Alright, we'll set that, set the zero right there. And then we will just go ahead and loosen this out. I've already got the, well I had them in there, but uh, now that I started filming I messed them up. Let me lower this back down and get that lock back in the way, or back in the uh, right spot. There we go. So I'll just loosen this up until it gets all the way up, and then you'll see um, there's a 7 right there. So. If it's right on the zero, that's 1700. That's what I'm looking for. Um, it's slightly past, as you can see, but uh, not by much, not by enough for me to uh, worry about it. So, anyways, just wanted to show you guys what it looks like when you're actually measuring. And you'll see if you go around, it'll show, you know, where it'd be if it doesn't actually end up at zero. Oh, and for some reason, it's focusing on the WG40 can. But uh, yeah, that's how you check your install height. Alright guys, so I went ahead and skipped over doing the valve seals because that was definitely the hardest set of valve seals I've ever done. Um, I don't know why, they were just stuck on there really well and as you can see I ended up just cutting them off basically. <laughs> um, otherwise it would take me like 10 or 15 minutes to get each one off so didn't end up getting into the head anywhere though, so that's all good. And I already went through and checked all the height on these, and it's um, pretty close to uh, one and seven hundred thousandths. So we're uh, good to go ahead and start installing these springs. Alright guys, so as you can see I got all of the BTR springs, the Ultimate RPM spring kit moved over to these new heads. All good to go. So now we will go ahead and uh, pull this balancer off, pull the front cover off, and uh, pull that LJMS cam out, and then uh, put the new foolproof performance cam in there. It's just 10 millimeter bolts. Sure I can get it off with the fuel pump still on there, we'll see. There's typically another one over here, but that's where my alternator mount is. I already pulled that out and I already pulled this one out, which is uh, part of the alternator mount as well. Nice and uh, clean, of course. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get this off without pulling the oil pump, but I'm going to try to. Also, another thing that I did is I uh, red Loctite these cam bolts, and I also marked them with a uh, white paint marker, which I don't know if you can see very well from there. But uh, it doesn't look like they have loosened up at all, so that's good. We 
go ahead and pull the oil pump off because I'm going to pull it off anyways in order to make sure I can get it lined up just right. So. As I've said in the old videos, or other videos, this is a Melling M10296 oil pump. Which a lot of people have said that it'll drain your oil pan, suck it dry, but uh, I haven't had that issue. Let's see if I can get that focused on there. There you go. Go ahead and pull this cam gear off. And the timing chain, um, it is an IWIS timing chain. It's just a stock gear. And we have some more 10 millimeter bolts. Another thing you have to be really careful of whenever you're doing a cam install on these is you cannot look at the cam bearings. Because if you do, they will definitely be bad. So we'll make sure to uh, avoid looking at those. Unless one comes out with the cam, then you're kind of forced to. But if they don't come out on the cam, they're good to go. Uh, before you make your comment and ask if you could buy this cam, um, the only way that you'll be able to purchase it is by asking uh, John Bewley if he will grind you another one because uh, I don't plan on selling this one. It's just got too much uh, sentimental value pretty much. More than likely turn it into a trophy or something like that. And there we go, we've got it out. And uh, looks good to me. No issues to be seen, so we'll go ahead and uh, put this off to the side and um, put the new one in. All right, I got the new cam all oiled up and messy. Now we'll slide this in here. And I am going to prime the engine before I start it, just uh, because I'm sure it's going to sit for a little while after this. Should have put them in there before, but I'm going to grab some water pump bolts, or at least a water pump bolt. It'll thread right into the cam. And then you can kind of use it as a uh, install tool. Help get over that last little lip. There we go, we got it in there. Make sure it uh, spins freely. It does. Now we'll put the uh, can retainer plate back on there. Now we'll go ahead and throw the sprocket back on there. See, I ended up having the dot just about on top, so that worked perfect. I should probably be uh, doing this a much fancier way, but uh, 
dot to dot seemed to work all right with the last cam, so whatever. If it seems like it's down on power or something, then I'll uh, probably pull it apart and regret not degreeing it and everything whenever I put it in. That uh, appears to be dot to dot to me. All right, so there is your cam install. However, I am going to pull these back out and go ahead and red Loctite them and uh, put them back in. I'll probably actually torque those to spec. I uh, didn't torque the retaining bolts, but that's uh, not as big of a deal. All right, guys, so I went ahead and got this buttoned up. Uh, as you can see, just threw the front cover back on there for now. Um, I need to run to the store, and it's uh, too late now. Everything's closed, and I uh, get some stuff to help uh, clean off the deck surface uh, in order to put the new heads and all that on, and then I'll uh, probably have to check for uh, piston to valve clearance because this is a, a pretty large cam compared to what we had in it before. So uh, I have to check that, make sure we're all good to go there, and then uh, that'll be all in the next video. But uh, make sure you guys uh, go over to the Squirrel Tuned website and uh, pick up a t-shirt or pre-order your hoodies, and uh, subscribe and share the video, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.